and welcome back in this video we're going to be working on a toyota camry with cloth slash leather seats uh, it was in pretty rough condition the door jams seemed like they haven't been cleaned in forever the back seats were worse because of their dog and he gets dirty and such and there was a good amount of debris and dust scattered across the interior and if you want to know all the tools and products that we use or if you want to start your detailing business go ahead and just check the description box down below for those links and resources And as you can imagine, because there's a dog in the vehicle, there's going to be quite a bit of dog hair. I don't know what that is. So this vehicle is actually at an apartment complex. So I get a lot of questions of people saying, hey, well, if I'm not at their home location, what do I do for power? Well, the straightforward answer is going to be well you're going to need your own generator when you're working on off-site locations so like at apartments or at some work location now there has been one time or a couple times maybe where um there might be an electrical outlet nearby meaning some apartments do have electrical plugs uh in the parking lot oftentimes they never work i maybe had it once that i went to a, a, an apartment location and there was an electrical outlet nearby and it actually worked so that was a surprise the other time is the customer's apartment unit was literally right in front of where we were parked so we could run the electrical cord from their little patio thing uh to the detail because it was literally maybe like 10 yards apart from the apartment unit to the parking lot so it was very convenient uh but nowadays yes we have our own generator we have two generators now but that's the thing that's going to come down it's either you have your own generator or you're able to find an electrical outlet nearby it's very iffy if to, to to hope that you're gonna find one close to you because again like in my experience they almost never work for whatever reason uh, and the odds of you being very close to the apartment to the unit of your customer also kind of iffy because that's just kind of you know by, by chance that that might happen but yes overall if you're not at their home location you need a generator
and this is the second generator that we have as our backup i'll make another video specifically on the predator generator uh in the next coming days but that's what we're using right now the honda generator is out for repair uh, so here on the vacuuming parts i need to get those um there's much softer brushes not that one but like the bushy one there's a much softer one that i definitely need to upgrade to but here we're gonna uh we're gonna get as much of the pet hair as we can um and it's always gonna differ like on some videos you hear me say we're not going for perfection we want to go at just enough to clean other times we do try to get as much as we can that way at the end of the detail it's not as much work for us so it's gonna vary depending on what we're working on and what our goal is going to be for that specific vehicle and as you see i'm mainly using the uh that attachment there on the carpeting side uh, when I'm gonna when I'm gonna vacuum the uh, leather parts or the more sensitive areas, I'll use that brush because it's it's softer, and I guess there's a less likely chance of you scratching the surface. But if you are gonna use that straight nozzle part, then you want to tap the material, not so much to drag it across the surface, to just reduce the chances of you uh, scratching any um any of the surfaces. Now here, I'm not trying to vacuum up the pet hair because we all know that's not gonna happen, at least not efficiently with just the vacuum. So here, I'm just trying to get the actual like debris, like crumbs or dirt or little specks of anything. Uh, when it comes to pet hair, I'm always gonna use some type of brush. I was going to use the DeWalt, but I figured um, just to get different types of video content here, I'll use the brush. And I think Anthony was about to use the DeWalt brush. So I figured I'd go with the Lily brush. Again, these are amazing pet hair brushes. Recommend them for your vehicle, for at home, to carrying more like It's very, very, very effective pet hair brush that you can carry just about anywhere. Now sometimes I'll vacuum this up with a vacuum or just because I don't want to clog up the vacuum bag um, since I have a, uh, you know, my the vacuum I have is not the strongest nor is it the biggest. So to not just clog it up, um, I'll sometimes just, since it's so easy to pick up, I'll just pick it up and put it in a trash bag as opposed to vacuum it up. It just depends, but if it's like a huge clump of pet hair, um, I, it's so easy just to pick it up and put it in a trash bag since we already have a trash bag around there to put any fries or receipts or anything that we see. Um, so it's not that big of a deal to just grab it and put it in a trash bag. Sometimes though, other times we'll just vacuum it up if we just, for whatever reason, like there's no specific formula, just whatever we feel like. When it comes to cleaning the steering wheel, it's very obvious to clean the front facing side of things. So as you see here, the controls, the, the, the logo and such. But also a very important part is to clean the back side of it, which you'll see here in a little bit because that's where your you know, hands and fingers are actually grabbing to on the backside. And when you see back there, it's like very wide or like grayish, or if you know, there's a lot of makeup going on there, it might be like orangey or like just, you know, so there's gonna be a lot of gunk on the backside of it as well. And when it comes to the signal or the, um, what's called the, um, the levers and such on the side that, can, that have all those controls, you never, ever, 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 ever 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 want to clean the letterings because they will come off with the slightest bit of agitation or cleaner like i we never clean that side like once we're done with the entire vehicle we go back to the levers and we very meticulously clean around the lettering because it is so easy to be removed we don't really see that so much on steering wheels like on those controls there it doesn't really happen although we've had some experiences in the past where it has but for the most part it doesn't happen it's specifically on the levers on the sides for your turn signal and your wipers and such those letters come off so easily And cleaning that where the instrument cluster is at, that's pretty straightforward. Um, sometimes it's a bit more tedious depending on the instrument cluster and how it's designed and such. But it, 
when it's this form, a, a simple towel and wiping it down, bringing down the steering column, giving yourself more room, super straightforward. If it's a bit more complex in terms of, um, you know, you can't really fit your hand in there, then you, you'll just go with the brushes. One thing I would highly recommend is you don't use any type of steam around this area because a lot of, or it can get on the backside of the instrument cluster and then like it fogs up behind it. It's much harder to, um, to remove all that fog or that steam behind it. It might leave a drip, it might leave. So it's best to not use, to not spray chemicals on the instrument cluster and to not use steam directly on the instrument cluster. Now, I, do, I know it doesn't really make sense that I was just doing this a few shots ago. When I'm on site recording for YouTube and such, uh, I, I just try to catch what I can during the moment. Like, we don't really plan out how we're going to record the video and who's going to do what. Like, whenever I see Anthony doing something else that's just, that I can just add to the, to the, to the um, video, then I stop what I'm doing and I jump to him and I record him. And then I jump to where I was. So this is why I actually started on the right side doing the pair. And then I jumped to Anthony because he was cleaning the steering wheel. Then I jumped back to my side where I should have, where I resumed my cleaning. Um, so that's why it looks out of whack because it, it kind of is during while I shoot these videos. Um, but just let me know that. I could kind of mesh them together to make them look more, um, uh, more streamlined. But hey, it's just this is the exact progression that we're doing with the video. And this was actually really funny. Uh, we were kind of close to a trash can and I saw something far away and I was just vacuuming, didn't think anything of it. But just a few moments later, I felt something kind of tug, not tugging, but just like brushing against, against my leg. Yes. And I turned around and there was this like balloon piece of looking thing that just came up to, to the vehicle. I thought it was so hilarious because it's just, that's so random, it's a piece of. So now let's jump back to Anthony where he's cleaning the bottom of the center console. We don't always have to use a steamer, right? Like it, this is the condition that it was in, we can easily handle it with just brushes. Um, and the reason why we don't get it started is because we are running on a generator, we are using the vacuum, we are using the, uh, um, the extractor. So on top of that, trying to heat up the steamer while we're using everything else, it is going to overload the generator. So it's not needed it would help but we can easily tackle this with no steam whatsoever and still get great results because it's not that bad to begin with Moving on to the floor mats, and during this detail, not that it really matters, but during this detail, it actually rained. It like it cooled like for five seconds, it drizzled like three times within like two hours. It was so strange. Uh, so we kept on rushing, not rushing, moving things around because we thought it was gonna rain because it definitely looked like it was gonna rain. 
Um, as you can tell, my hand is over the Camry lettering. As you can tell, it's all folded and looks like it's about to come off. Um, that's how it was when we got there. And to not make it any worse and to make sure that I don't, you know, just yeet it off the, the mat, I'm going to um, be very careful and place my hand over it so I can get very close without actually damaging the, or, you know, further damaging the, um, the, uh, logo name thing of the car And I'm making the official statement right here is that you need to have a pump sprayer for your APC cleaner or your like primary solution because using a just a typical uh, spray bottle with a trigger is just so much. It takes so much more time, and your forearm, your forearms get much more fatigued because you're pulling that trigger so many times. So it's much quicker, much better when you have a pump sprayer in your arsenal go to Home Depot, purchase like a $14, what a cheap little one, or order an IK pump sprayer. It doesn't matter, but you have to have a pump sprayer in your arsenal for your heavy, your most used products or solutions, I should say. And if you're mobile, this is going to happen to you. They just cut the grass around the apartment. There were hard gusts of wind. So whether we were using this on a table or not, this is going to happen where you just get the breeze flew, uh, thrown onto whatever you're working on, into the vehicle, into everywhere because that's just how it works out. And yeah, most of that little, whatever that was, just was removed just by simply going over it with the extractor multiple times. So there's, I did a video on this a while back on multiple ways to clean your door jams. You can just like me spray your cleaner, wipe it down with a towel, and then follow it up to remove any streaks. You can spray it down, agitate it with a brush, rinse it down, and then wipe it down. Multiple variations. Um, I don't try to put, you know, I don't overly complicate the door jam section because not many people care about it. They just want to see a clean one, um, and you know. You can go to the extent of polishing door jams, waxing ceiling door jams, but that's at a different level of service. You're not about to do that on like every single vehicle because that just, unless you're properly pricing, it's that's definitely overkill.
since the seats are both fabric and leather but primarily primarily leather we're simply going to clean the fabric right now which is you know agitate and extract and once we're finished with all the seats that's when we'll go back and touch up the leather areas this is a much more convenient way for us to clean because um, one because it's just a small portion of fabric that we're cleaning so that makes life much easier and we like to kind of it, it, it depends on the on what we're working on but it's good to just finish everything in phases like we don't want to do the fabric seats and then the leather parts and then move on to the next uh, seat we want to do all the fabric on all seats then do the leather on all seats uh, we just that's what we do most of the time it's not like hard fact but that's I, ideally that's what we always do just full passes of everything And like I said, it looked like it was going to rain. So when it's not, if it's still relatively warm outside, meaning it's not just a complete overcast and there's still some sun coming in or it's still hot outside, the seats dry relatively fast. If it's cold, if there's no sun, then that's when it takes much longer to dry. I remember in the winter, or at least when it was, rain, it was raining and we cleaned the interior, it was all fabric and I put air movers on. We try to um, to remove as much water with with mopping it up with towels and such on the on the fabric. And it still took a very long time for it to dry. Like far before, like after we left, it you know the customer had to leave the windows open and everything. So when it's relatively warm outside, it'll dry pretty quick. If it's not warm outside, it takes much longer for it to dry. So that's a good rule of thumb to explain with your customers when they're asking about is it going to be dry or not. It's primarily dictated over weather. And everyone's favorite part is here is the dirty water that we extracted plus a few of the debris that kind of fell in there while I, while I was waiting to get the camera. Fast forwarding to the end of the detail, uh, we always ask the customer for their keys for this specific reason. Well, one, if the doors for some reason lock on us then we can open it again but also to clean the shift uh, the gears because obviously when it's in park we can't clean the other side of it so we'll turn on the car we'll put it all the way down to the lowest gear or whatever it is and make sure we clean all around the area because sometimes this one wasn't that bad but there's definitely times where it's just like crazy dirty and if we didn't do that then the customer would easily see just all that nasty like a very clean interior but once they put it in reverse or drive or whatever then they'll see like all that nastiness around there. So very important to do that.
Yeah. This just turns it into standard car, right? Uh, yeah, sort of. Not really standard per se, though. But like, you use, like, dash it? And boom, we are done with the interior. We did this like two, three weeks ago now. And I think by the time we were done, the interior was, when I checked the levels, about 93% dry, if I'm not mistaken. So the customer got in and immediately left. And good thing, because it was completely dry and he didn't have to worry about getting anything wet or leaving the windows open. And overall, it was a good transformation, the customer enjoy the service very much so well at least the results of the service not really us actually cleaning it they don't really care about that um nothing too specific to point out um but we always i always we always pack up the work environment and then we call the customer out and then um i'll we'll always say one of us will be on standby which is usually anthony so if something does come up what that needs to be cleaned then i'll just yell it or just call it out to anthony saying hey can you get this and that and come touch this up so a very efficient process that we have uh sometimes though we'll leave the vacuum out or the major things out like the generator the vacuum um just because if we do need them it takes a lot more time not a, it's just more of a hassle to get those things back out back out so best to keep some things out just in case you need them for any last minute things but for the most part we pack everything up and then call the customer out But other than that, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you wanna know all the tools and products that we use or the guide to uh, starting a detailing business, check the description box down below. There's just a few more clips here and there if you wanna stick around. Other than that, I will see you on the next video.